In the year of 1989, David Hasselhoff stood next to the Berlin Wall and sang, I've been looking for freedom. Have you been looking for freedom lately? My parents and my older brother and sister surely were when they jumped into their car, mostly made out of plastic, for which they had to wait 10 years in advance in order to buy it. The car was called a Trabant, and it was not only quite slow and quite small, but it also made a very distinct noise because it had to run on a reduced number of cycles. It went something like, Ding 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 ding. They were on their way to line up at the border with Bavaria, which was quite close by, just a one-hour drive, like so many other East Germans were at that time. They were patiently waiting in line for several hours to visit the West for the first time. While they were waiting in this noisy traffic jam. The smell of oil and gasoline slowly build up in this badly isolated car and all of the other very same cars around them. When the queue finally moved ahead, they weren't shot like many other East Germans who tried to cross the border with the West before the wall came down. Instead, they were greeted by a friendly border agent who handed them 100 bucks, 100 Deutsche Mark per person welcome money. This welcome money was indeed very welcome for a nice little shopping trip in the West. But it would not stop there. Soon after, they would become part of a new democratic political community, a new demos. Politics with free and fair elections, not having to fear repercussions for being in the wrong political party, no more need to have the best connections to install a new heating system to replace the coal oven in their home they had just bought a few years back to raise a family. No more fear of friends or relatives spying on them and reporting suspicious behavior to state authorities. This was a great relief which spurred their desire to make their voices heard and to participate in this new community. Their stories motivated me to study political science. I look for ways to include those who want to have a voice, those who can't quite make themselves heard yet, or those who have only recently become part of the demos. Take Maria and her family as an example. As an immigrant in the canton of Geneva, she is not allowed to vote in neither elections nor referendums beyond the local level. This is the case for almost half of the population in the canton and about a quarter of the population in Switzerland overall. Maria would like to make herself heard. She would like to participate in a process where the community, the demos, comes together to discuss the current and future challenges that not just the local community, but all of us are facing, all of the population. One bright sunny day in downtown Geneva, she received a letter, having been picked at random among the citizens and foreigners living in the canton. Along with 30 other residents, she was invited to discuss how to strengthen the local community and how to deal with the consequences of climate change at the regional level. She happily accepted and there was even a small compensation offered for the four weekends of deliberation she had been invited to. When she first entered the large hall where the citizens assembly took place, there was an atmosphere of curiosity and the vapor of freshly brewed coffee in the air. Maria wore her bright summer dress on that warm day in spring. She was excited and a little nervous, but curious and eager to learn about her community. She met people who live extremely close by, but whom she had never met before. Over the course of the following weekends, some of these strangers would turn into new acquaintances and even friends. When I first met her at the assembly, this was what she 
found most positive. Lifting the veil of anonymity in our society by talking to neighbors and fellow residents who would have otherwise remained just in the dark. Over the course of the following weekends, they listened to panels consisting of experts, professors, environmental activists, lawyers, and urban developers. They derived over a hundred recommendations for local policymakers to consider how to strengthen the community and how to deal with the issue of climate change at the regional level. The power of this community and the process I could observe enabled Maria to become part of something greater. Citizens and foreigners, otherwise unconcerned by the buzz of professional politics, started to become educated on the topic themselves. Finally, the day arrived when Maria and her new colleagues handed over their recommendations and presented their findings to the politicians. The politicians listened carefully to people who would have otherwise had no real chance, no real opportunity to make their voices heard in a direct face-to-face -face conversation and thus to make a real impression and impact. The idea of citizens' assemblies has already gained a lot of traction and attention. Randomly selected citizens, while not replacing traditionally elected politicians, come together in all parts of the world to discuss issues affecting their communities and issues of public concern more generally. The composition of the citizens' assemblies is usually much more representative of the underlying demographics of the population they ought to represent than any traditional elected parliament. There are more women, more immigrants, more people of lower education, more people of lower income than you would typically find in any elected parliament. Maria told me she would never forget this experience and what a heartfelt joy it was to learn about and to learn with her community expanding the demos. Just like my parents told me about their experience before.